In this problem, we're given a 3.5 kilogram block that travels over a smooth surface that ha I have highlighted in blue. And then it transitions to a rough surface that I've highlighted in orange with a kinetic coefficient of friction of 0 0.25. It's connected via a spring that has a spring constant of 640 newtons per meter and the block has a mass of 3.5 kilograms. Now for the first part, we need to find out the total thermal energy dissipated as the block travels a distance d and d is given as 7.8 meters. So d is equal to 7.8 meters and then it comes to rest. So for that, we need to calculate the frictional force exerted when it, uh, the block reaches the orange surface. Now, the kinetic friction is given by F equals mu sub k times the contact force R. Now let's consider the forces acting on the block vertically. So it's being pulled down by the weight that is equal to the mass times gravity and it's being pushed up by the contact force R. Now, there is no net vertical acceleration, so the contact force must be equal to the weight. That means that R equals mg, and we can go ahead and make the substitution in our first formula, so that gives F equals mu sub k times mg. Now, note that all of these are constants. The coefficient of kinetic friction is a constant, the mass of the block is a constant, and the force of gra and the gravitational acceleration is also constant. Now, when we have a constant force, force, its work done is the force times the distance traveled under the influence of the force. So the work done is actually equal to mu sub k times m times g times d and we have all of these values so mu equals 0.25 the mass of the block is 3.5 kilograms gravitational acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared and d is 7.8 meters now it's a simple matter of performing the multiplication which we can do using a calculator and this just turns out to be 67 joules to do significant figures, and that is our answer to part one. Now for the second part, we need to find, rather determine, the maximum kinetic energy of the block. Now the block has a maximum kinetic energy just as it leaves the spring. So it's traveling this in this direction and immediately before it comes on to the region where the friction acts so it's being started so it starts to slow down immediately when it hits the region with the friction now when it stops so its initial kinetic energy is the maximum kinetic energy at the point, rather, so I'm drawing that point with the dotted line. So whenever, when it's at, it's at this point where it hasn't crossed over, it's just about to cross over into the region with the friction it has the maximum energy, rather the ma maximum ener kinetic energy and the maximum velocity because it's being accelerated by the spring and it hasn't started to slow down yet. So E sub I is the maximum kinetic energy that we have to find out. Now also note that it's not attached, quite attached to the spring. So it's going to leave the spring immediately as it goes ahead. So there isn't going, going to be no potential energy of the spring. So the initial energy minus the final energy, see, 
sorry, the final energy. So E sub F minus the initial energy. equals negative 67 because 67 joules of energy leave the system as thermal energy as we calculated in the previous part. So our final energy is actually equal to zero because there is no kinetic energy and there is no potential energy. And that gives us negative E sub i equals negative 67 joules. And that gives E sub i equals 67 joules. And that is the answer to part B. Now for the third part, we know that when the, the spring is compressed, it has some potential energy, let's call it U, stored in it. And it imparts all of this potential energy into the block and it accelerates to its maximum kinetic energy. Now that means that the maximum kinetic energy, so the maximum kinetic energy that we got called E sub i is actually equal to the potential energy of the spring. And the potential energy of the spring is given by the formula one half k x squared, where x is the change in length of the spring, in this case the compression, and that is equal to 67 joules which gives x is equal to the square root of 2 times k e sub i divided by k. Now we can simply substitute in our values, so 2 times 67 divided by 640 and that gives x is equal to 0 0.46 meters. Again, correct to two significant figures. And that is our required answer for the final part.